Well, we're in the, in the middle of missions month. You probably did not miss that, right? Are you guys excited about missions? Because God is, amen? God's heart is beating for reaching the lost. God's heart is, is for, for, for bringing the light into darkness, just like we sung this morning. And this last week, uh, we had a missionary with us too. Uh, the week before, I have talked about how God sometimes handpicks people. We talked about Paul and Barnabas, how God handpicks people. The Holy Spirit handpicks people and sends them out in the power of the Holy Spirit because what they will encounter out there, it needs the Spirit. Amen? It needs the Spirit. So last uh, week, we have heard uh, about uh, a, a great couple, and today we have another great couple with us. And they have awesome things to share. They will share uh, also miracle stories of what, what God is doing. And I believe that God is in the business of making miracles. Amen? And He has that for our own lives in stores too. And He wants to work. The God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen? Uh, Paul Kramer, would you come up? Bring your beautiful wife up here, Robin. And let's, uh, I, I want to give you... The pulpit here, you have got good 35 minutes, share, uh, feel free to share. Here is the mic. Look out, I Just got stories. Good, <laughs> we're excited about it. Go ahead. Wow, thank you so much, Pastor Arnold, and thank, uh, thanks to all of you for having us here. Uh, we're excited and, and happy to be part of your missions month. Um, so we are Paul and Robin Kramer, missionaries to Thailand. Uh, we've been there a little over seven years now. Um, today, uh, we want to share... We're going to share about our testimony. Um, it's going to be a little different than what you might think. And uh, we're going to share what, what's Thailand, what's going on in Thailand, what's God doing in Thailand, uh, and all of that. So, but before we do, we have a picture of our family. People always ask us about our family. And so we have uh, four children. Uh, and as of two months ago, uh, they're all married, so that's that picture. And we have four grandchildren there. So um, that's our tribe, as we affectionately call them. And uh, so Paul's going to start sharing this morning, and uh, we're going to, I'm going to share a little bit later. And so it's sometimes kind of awkward for the one of us standing up here who's not talking. So I'm going to sit down, Paul's going to start, and then we're going to switch, right? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Arnold, for letting us come and share with you. And uh, for us, 2007 was a big year, big year of change and the start of everything. So prior to that, we had been married uh, for a long time, but not to each other. We'd both been through divorces. And so we joined our families when our kids were all in high school. And then 2007 comes around, and our youngest, last one's gone to college. And we're like, yes, you know. We're, we cried when the first one, we cried with joy the last one, but, uh, and so what are we going to do? Well, we, we heard God saying, go to church. You should try going to church, and that wasn't on our radar. I had grown up Catholic down in Iowa, phased out right after high school, and so I admit that I'm from Iowa, and, <laughs> but Robin grew up mainly in Olivia, Minnesota, down the road. She was born in Hutch and lived here for 10 years, so she knows this area. But so anyway, so we thought, let's track out church. And we're living in the Shakopee Savage area. Our kids had gone to school that way, and so we just looked up the nearest one, and it was a church plant meeting in an elementary school. So we're like, let's go check this place out. And so uh, it was different in a good way, and God got a hold of our hearts, and we committed our lives to Christ, and, and uh, that was the start of it. And then just very shortly after that, we just sensed God saying, you are not doing it right. You're not a good example to your kids and others. You need to get married like right now. Don't just live together. And so we, uh, we flew off to California that next week, came back, called our kids, told everybody we were married. Life was changing. And, uh, and then right away, there was a, they do two mission trips a year. I'd never heard of mission trips. So I went on the first one. It was just a men's little small few of us, men's guy going to Haiti. And I got baptized in Haiti, came back all excited. And uh, there was another one then, and I went to Uganda. Robin went to Uganda, and she got baptized in the Holy Spirit. So now we're all on fire. So we just started doing more mission trips. And El Salvador, I think, was our first one together. And then back to Haiti. And 
we do mission trips over the next few years, just knowing we felt like we should do that, wasn't sure what that looked like. But I want to read a, bur a Bible verse, and a number of Bible verses stuck out to us, and we learned during that those first early years. And, and this one I, I really liked, and it's, um, I'm sure you've probably heard of it. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And just a few words that stuck out, I think, with us were go. Of course, we were going to, went to Haiti, went to Haiti six times. Thought maybe we're moving to Haiti, but didn't sense that totally. But uh, so we were going across the world, and I know we're all commanded to go somewhere close here, or, or maybe it'll be uh, out of the country, but going and sharing with that. But the next says, make disciples. And I'm like, how can I make disciples? Well, I, I kind of learned as I was learning more, it's my actions and my words and how do I, relationships with the people and, and teaching them, making them disciples. And uh, even today, a different time, I do devotions in the morning and I'm like, what am I going to say? I got, I don't, still don't feel worthy. How do I do this? And and uh, who would, I want to go talk to people, but it says right at the end of this, I am with you always to the end of the age, always. So that's just comforting. It's like, I can step out. It's not me, God, and the Holy Spirit in me working. So, so I try to remember that. Well, uh, we continue to go on trips. And every time we go on a trip, I'd pray, we'd pray, Lord, if this is it, just it's got to be the right spot. We don't want to get this wrong. And we went multiple trips and... Finally, in 2011, we went to uh, Thailand, and I, I thought, I didn't know. It's the other side of the world. I didn't pay attention. I thought we were going maybe Taiwan, but I didn't know anything about it. But Thailand's straight across the country. And we get there, and from the moment we landed, Robin, it's midnight. She feels it, and it's power lines everywhere. That's it. And she comes over, goosebumps, crying. It's like, do you feel this? And I'm like, no, no, just... <laughs> Long plane ride, hold that thought. And, uh, but throughout the week, we just, we built a church, we helped with that, we saw ministry, we just sensed God's presence there. And uh, the very last day, he took us into the, uh, where there was a, a, a church, a Thai church, and it was before we were going to leave, and uh, he said, okay, go pray. It was a big church, that Thailand usually has smaller churches, but pretty bigger than this was a worship area, and he said, just pray over this area, and then uh, for 10, 15 minutes, and then we're going to go and take you to the airport, and so I, like I did, I went to a corner, and I just prayed out loud, Lord, if this is it, I need to know, and I, only time I've heard audibly, I heard, done deal, I'm like, <laughs> and I had gone on lots of trips with these guys, there was a dozen of us, and I, and I look around, nobody's saying it to me, nobody's even near me, so then I'm like, is that you, Lord, done deal, and then I'm um, like, too far away, done deal. I miss our kids. And then I'm bawling. It was ugly. And I'm and done deal. I love to fish. I had seen no fishing. There's no fishing. Done deal. And just like, I, you know, for I, probably it was only two minutes. It seemed like forever. And then we got together and we held hands. And I was sobbing. And, uh, and I wouldn't share with Robin even. I'm just processing this. I don't want this to influence our decision. But we got done with that. And, and then we, <clears throat> the, the pastor or the missionary had led us out in the front door we walked out the side door to get to the van. He'd gone around the back, and there's a boat on against the, a fishing boat. And I'm like, what's that? Against the church. And he's like, oh, pastor here fishes every month. And I'm like, well, I'm called to Thailand. We, it was, <laughs> so, so we moved to Thailand in 2012 then. But uh, it was unusual to feel the presence of God like that because little stats, uh, Thailand has 69 million people. 95% of them are Buddhist, less than 1% one one are Christian. So we weren't expecting to, to feel the presence, but they're so lost, they're less than 1% Christian. And uh, when we moved there, I, I learned a lot from a, a monk about Buddhism that I hung out with. And so uh, some, I'll tell you a little bit about Buddhism. So they believe in reincarnation. You live, you die, you come back as something else. They believe that you can affect that by uh, earning merit. And if you have enough merit, you have good, better karma. That's where those words come from. And then you come back as something better. So they're hoping to get good karma, 
for instance, if you're a woman, they feel it's more important you'd come back as a man. Or you'd come back with a better paying job. And it works its way up. Monks, is like, monks are just like at the top of the list. But then there's even Holy Spirits. And of course, the other way, if you don't do enough, then you'll come back as an animal or an insect or an evil spirit. And so the ways they earn this merit is you can go to a temple, you ring a bell, hit a gong. You don't know how much you're earning, but you're getting merit. And, uh, or you can get blessed by a monk. That's, that's a very common way. And so monks, they get up at, there's, there's temples everywhere in Thailand, and there's monks, a lot of monks. But they get up early, about 4 o'clock a.m., and they, 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 uh, they meditate, try to become empty. They meditate. And then they chant for about an hour. That's kind of eerie coming out of those temples, if you hear that, about five. But then about six o'clock, they go walk around the streets, and they have a big bowl. And they, people give them food, and they believe that they get merit for doing this. And that's how the monks live, off of the food and the, the supplies that people give them. And so... Um, in Thailand, there's many, many of the cities don't even have a church. They don't have a Christian. And so it's a very Buddhist country. And uh, one Saturday, we started, we weren't there too long. We learned that we need a Sabbath. So Saturdays are Sabbath. For me, I, I recharge by going out. I ride the motorbike. I go fishing. I, I talk to people. Uh, I had been a middle school teacher for years in Rosemont. Minnesota, and Robin had been an accountant, so I get recharged by doing that stuff, and the accountant likes to stay home and have quiet and uh, read, I think, I don't know, listen to podcasts, but that's what recharges her, we get together at 5.30 at night and have a date night, so one of the Saturdays, I'm go I always started a market about 7 a.m., there's outdoor markets, and, a, and there was a monk about my age standing there, and usually they, they in that city, we were one of the few non- Thai people, so only the college students really speak some English, and the older people don't speak any English. But anyway, uh, I see this monk, and I'm walking by him. Out, he's out by the market, and, his, and I sawadi kap. So in, in uh, we don't shake hands. We go sawadi. So I go sawadi kap, and he's like sawadi, and then he's I hear, do you speak English? And I'm like, is that Thai or English? I, I'm like, yeah, I speak English, and he's speaking English to me. Where are you from? American, all that. And I just talked a little bit, and then I said, hey, you got a phone? And he has this orange clo cloak on. He's like, got a little blue flip phone. I'm like, what's your number? And so I took his number, and then the next week I got, got a hold of him the next Saturday morning, and I, I went to his temple, and he's showing me all over it. And then he says, can I see your house? I'm like, wow, okay, sure. And we're walking out of the temple to go to the street to get on our motorbike. And I remember Robin sitting there at home having her quiet time, so I better call her. So I call her, and his name is Goong. And Goong is a common name there. Goong is Thai means shrimp. And so I know a number of Goongs. That's a common name. So Goong is right next to me, and I call Robin. I'm like, hey, Robin, I'm coming home, and I got a monk with me. And she's like, not a good time for that. And... I'm like, five minutes, because we're already committed. And so I have a picture of it when we showed up. Here's me and Goong on the side. And that's Robin. And so anyway, I got to know Goong very well over the next three years. And we hung out most Saturdays. And uh, I just learned a lot about Buddhism through him, traveling with him. And he learned a lot about Christianity. Uh, of course, I'd pray over the meals and everything. I learned he loves to be prayed for. So... I'd had to take him several times to the hospital, and when I bring him home, like, for instance, the, yeah, he had a bad knee or a bad leg, and I, I prayed over him right in the temple and all of that, and, and the next morning he calls me early, and I'm thinking he's healed, and he's like, oh, I got a fever now. I'm like, okay, back to the hospital. But then I prayed, and then I shared a miracle story and about Jesus and everything, and uh, he, he, we just became friends. In fact, he wanted to give me, one time we get back, and he wanted to give me this Buddhist statue. Oh, this is a statue. It would look great in your house, big shiny. No, I'm, you know, I'm a Christian. I cannot have your statue. Oh, take it. And I, and I was starting to offend him. I thought, I'm like, okay, I'll take it. And, but when I put it underneath the seat and my motorbike started driving home, I just had this ugly, dark feeling. I'm, I, I'm not going to keep this, this statue. So I went back early the next morning and 
talk to him, and I put it in a bag. I said, I'm not, you know, I want to be your friend. I don't want to offend you, but you, you, we're Christians, and that's an idol. We have one God. It was another opportunity to share all about why and what, and, uh, and uh, we, we don't worship things like that and all this stuff you have here. And so, he, oh, that's okay. And he went to his little room, and he comes back with this biggest pineapple I've ever seen. Uh, how about a pineapple? I'm like, yes, yes. Keep your statue. And uh, anyway, uh, just a quick update about Goong. Uh, he quit being a monk, and he moved to Chiang Mai, which is a bigger city there, and he drives uh, like a, a taxi, a song tao, which is like a pickup truck, and he drives that. And uh, we got back here in January, We've been, and we'll go back to Thailand early January coming up. So uh, talked to Goong, and we said, we're flying out of Chiang Mai. Let's call Goong up and uh, catch up with him, take him out to dinner before we go. So we did, and we're talking, and... Uh, with Goong, and right at the end, before we're going to leave, it's getting late at night, and Robin's like, hey, Goong, how can we pray for you? And he's like, ah, you know, like, I, my family, good health, I want to be a monk again. That's the three things I think he wanted. Robin just kind of, we're going to pray you become a Christian. And so Goong is like, oh, you Christians, you have, you fight with the Muslims, you know, that's his attitude. You, you fight with Muslims. And we're like, no, I mean, there are some bad uh, Muslims and some bad Christians, but we have a lot of Muslim friends there also. We do. That's not it. And so Goong had learned all of his English through uh, American songs. And so I thought that was interesting. That's how they kind of do it. So he knew songs really well. But we talked some more, and then Goong says, hey, we got reincarnation. He's trying to talk me into that. And uh, we got reincarnation. I said, we got heaven. And when he heard heaven, he broke into an old song, if you know it, uh, Stairway to Heaven. He's singing that. <laughs> And so we talked a little bit, prayed for him, and uh, said we'll see you in a year, basically. But, um, and then just one, one other thing I want to share, too. Every year we get a few teams that come and help us. A lot of times they're Chi Alpha teams. We get a number of teams that come and, and help us. And it's through uh, one of these teams that we met a woman at an elephant camp because for their fun day, we take them to an elephant camp, which has an elephant show and everything. And there's a woman named Deer, uh, college age or 20, early 20s, who, who is the announcer for the elephant show. And so we go to the, with this Chi Alpha team, and, and after the show, she comes up to one of the young volunteers, uh, college gals who was there, because this college gal had recently gone through knee surgery and she has a brace on her knee. So Deer, the Deer comes up to her and says, hey, I'm having that same surgery. Tell me about it. And so she did. But then this uh, young woman from America said, uh, but I believe our God can heal your knee because I'm a Christian. And can I pray for your knee? So in front of everybody, she's up there praying for her knee, just a little prayer for a little bit. And, and that was it. But this gal was so excited. Man, I, I was bold. I prayed for her in public and all of that. And kind of the end of it, well, about three months later, I go back again to the elephant show, and Deer sees me, and she comes up, and she's like, hey, are you that guy who brought that woman who prayed for my knee? And, yeah, and she's like, my knee got healed, and I never needed the surgery. Well, I'm like, well, praise the Lord on that. And then, uh, but then she said, I found a church, and I'm a Christian now. Yeah. I think that was more difficult, finding a church. So. But... This is an update on deer. Right before we came back, this is Robin and another person who was there with us, another colleague. And so we saw her like right before we came back. And she's seven months pregnant, married now. And so we had the opportunity to pray over her. So I want to keep deer and goong in, in your prayer. So Robin, if you come up, let's, uh, yeah, let's just remember deer and goong to pray for. I, I love that story in the uh, about deer and the, the thing that, always stands out to me is that, you know, it's that one person, right? We know that God cares about every person, every one. Yeah. He goes after that one. You know, I know we don't know who she has the potential to impact. You know, not only her family, but her village uh, and her city and people around her. I mean, she can impact hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people uh, more than we can. Uh, so I love to see how God is working uh, in Thailand, um, and just from, you know, a prayer from a young woman on a short-term trip. 
right? Sometimes we think, what can we do on, in a week or 10 days? Well, that changed that woman's life and her family. So, all right, as Paul shared a little bit, um, I was an accountant for 20 years. And uh, I think that's funny because only God can take an introverted accountant uh, and call her to be a missionary and talk to people about Jesus. It's, it's, that's a huge stretch for me. And just even being up here <laughs> is a huge stretch for me. And when as Paul and I were studying to become pastors, um, we were, you know, taking classes. And, and for many of our classes, uh, we had to prepare a sermon. And uh, we had to find people to give those sermons to. So our family heard sermons and our friends heard sermons. And we weren't to the level of sharing them in a church like this. And, and uh, one day I asked my, um, my boss if I could share a sermon at work. And she said, sure. And so um, at lunchtime, I invited my coworkers. And six accountants came. It's kind of, it's almost like that joke, sort of a joke right there. You know, six accountants came to listen to a sermon <laughs> from another accountant, right? But of those six people that came, only one of them was a Christian. And five of them had seen our life change. They saw us go to church. They saw us get married. They saw us go on mission trips. And every time we came back from a trip, I'd slow, show a slideshow and tell them all about what God was doing around the world. And, and so God just reminded me, you know, he used me even there, right? Um, so I got to share with them uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Many of you probably are familiar with it. It's one of the first verses that I've memorized. It's trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. So what did that mean? As, as I shared with them, you know, if truly if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, for me, it means that I'm not anxious. I'm not worried about things. When I start having those feelings, I know to go to God. I know to go to my word, right? to God's word. Um, do not lean on your own understanding. Um, so I, I had the title of controller for many years, and my family used to tease me that I took my title to work because I was a little bit like that at home too. Uh, but, um, you know, God directs our path. So, or I'm sorry, but not, leaning on your own understanding. Um, when we first became Christ followers, um, I, every morning, kind of symbolically would raise my hands to, to the Lord and say, you know, here I am. Um, Lead me, guide me, help me. You know, here's my stuff, right? We, we all have stuff, big or small. We all have stuff, but here's my stuff. You know, help me, help me to be truly a Christ follower. Um, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. So as he was making our path straight uh, to be missionaries and, and to be missionaries in Thailand, uh, I started to, to get in my mind, it kind of creeped in my mind, like we were going to be great when we got to Thailand. A little bit too much prideful, you know, like God was going to, you know, God is going to do great things when we get to Thailand, right? But it just, in my mind, it was like it was going to be great then. And God reminded me one day, like, it's great now. So as we were itinerating, preparing the very first time, it's like, you know, I didn't just call you to go to Thailand to talk to people about Jesus. I called you to talk to people about Jesus wherever you are. And it was a great reminder for us. And even this year when we're back, you know, we have new neighbors. We, we live in, in the Twin Cities, and we're in a townhouse. We're surrounded by people from other countries. We have one American family behind us that has a Buddha statue on their deck. So God just reminded us, like, there are people right around us, no matter where we are, right? So uh, the first couple years that we were in Thailand, uh, we were in Chiang Mai, which is in northern Thailand. And uh, we worked with a church that had a coffee shop and an English center. And so primarily we taught English to university students as a way to build relationships, invite them to church, invite them to our activities. And a number of uh, young uh, un university students got saved, became Christians. Uh, so praise God for that. It's a big step for somebody who's Buddhist to even come into a church. Uh, and so that was our first couple years. Um, this last term, we were in the city of Lampong. And that's about an hour and a half out of Chiang Mai. And we went there as part of a church planning team. So we went to plant a church. And we thought, okay, we'll take this, this ministry concept that we had in Chiang Mai and put it in Lampong in this smaller city. And so we thought, okay, we'll have an English center. You know, we'll have our church. We'll have an English center. And we decided we didn't need a coffee shop because there was a lot of coffee shops there. And none of us really knew how to do that. So, but a church at an English center. And we started to look for a church for a building. And we couldn't find a building. 
either it was too big or too small, or we looked at one that didn't have air conditioning, and Thailand is very hot, so that's kind of a deal breaker. And we even looked at buildings that once they saw us, the price changed. We got the foreigner premium, <laughs> not the discount. Um, and even if we would get beyond that, um, if we told them we were going to have a church there, um, it was a no. And so for two years, we had church in our living room. And it was a little bit frustrating because we like, you know, like we, we really thought like this was the plan. And God just reminded us, like, is it your plan or is it my plan? Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I can be really good at developing, developing a plan and then asking God to bless it, right? <laughs> Instead of praying to God that he reveals the plan to me and then acting on it. Right? So he shared with us, like, no, I, this is my plan. I got it covered. And so for two years, we met in our living room. And uh, a few people came into church, not very many. But what we learned after those two years, of what a blessing it was, and the seeds that were planted with our neighbors. Because we lived in a, we lived in a small house that had a little front yard. But the, the back, actually, are, we shared rain gutters with three houses. So we were very close. So, like, our neighbors sneezed, and you heard them. So you were a little careful about what you did in your own house. But, um, so when we had church, we had church on Monday nights. And uh, our neighbors knew that every Monday night people came to our house. They heard us worship in Thai and English. They heard us tell stories. We used a story method. So they, they'd hear us tell a story about God, um, about Jesus. And then they, we would always eat together. So they would, we'd sometimes get kind of loud. So they'd hear that fellowship. So God just reminded us that even though not one of our neighbors came into our house for church, they heard it every Monday night. And that was his plan. Now, we might not know what comes of that, what, what, when fruit comes of that, but God does, right? And our job is just to be obedient to that. And so eventually, after two years, we did find a building. Uh, we had a relationship with a, a person who um, was renting a space, and there was a space next to them, so they helped us negotiate it. So I'd like to tell you a story of two women whose lives were changed uh, in that building, in that church. Uh, so we've got a picture of our dear friends, Ng and Nui. So Ng is on your left, and her mother, Nui, is on your right. And we had met Ng at one of the local coffee shops. And uh, we had gotten to know her. She speaks fairly good English. And uh, we invited her to church, uh, and they came to church. Now, Ing doesn't drive, and so the first night that she came to church, um, her mother, Nui, brought her on a motorbike. So the two of them pulled up on a motorbike, um, and they're both Thai, Buddhist. Uh, Nui, at one point, had been married to a Muslim man. And so the first night that she came to church or drove up on that motorbike, she still had her headscarf on. We still invited her into church, uh, and she didn't come in that night, but Ing came in. The next week, they came back. We ran out there again to invite her in. This week, she did not have her headscarf on, uh, and she came into church. So Nui came in that second week. The third week, they come back, and we're just celebrating that, this that they're coming, they're learning, they're, they're, they're learning about God, about Christianity. And that third week, Nui shared a story with us. And this is what she said. She said the first week that she had been there, um, we had given them a Bible in the Thai language because they didn't have one. And the, she went home that night, and in the middle of the night, she woke up and felt like God was telling her to read the Bible. And so she did. And as she was reading the Bible, she felt like God t was telling her to pray for anything, and I'll give it to you. And so she prayed for her knees. Her knees had been sore, painful for 10 years. And she got up the next morning, and her knees were healed. Praise God, right? So she said to us in Thai, she said, I'm in. <laughs> I want to be a Christ follower. I want to believe in one God, right? And I love that we didn't have a fancy method. We invited her to church, and God did the rest, right? That's applicable everywhere, right? And sometimes we get hung up uh, on, you know, the stats of Thailand, as Paul shared, less than 1% Christian. And that can be hard sometimes. But we have to remember the stories like Ing and Nui. Like, God is there, 
and God is doing things. Even if it's one person at a time or one family at a time, he's changing lives, you know, and we're thankful, so thankful for that. Now, we got to see Inga Nui uh, last fall right before we left, and uh, Nui also has a son, and uh, he's very, very shy, so she can't get him to come to church. Uh, but she told us that um, one night she put the Bible underneath his pillow in hopes that God would speak to him as well. So you can pray for that. Um, and, uh, you know, just continue to pray for Ing and Nui. Um, as, as Buddhist people become Christ followers, um, it's a lot to learn. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's sometimes not easy for them. So pray for them to be to stay strong in their faith and what they're, what they're learning and continue to learn and continue to go deep. And when we go back to Thailand um, in January, uh, instead of just working with one church, we'll work with multiple churches um, out of, in Chiang Mai and, and out of Chiang Mai. And uh, we have, as Paul mentioned before, we have many cities that don't have churches uh, and many cities that don't even have a Christ follower, have a Christian. So how does somebody here if there isn't even one Christian there. So a big part of what we want to do in our next term, God's given us a vision to help start a pastoral training center. And so we'll come alongside the, the Thai pastors that are there and the churches that are there to help them, you know, reach people, but also help them bring up the next generation of, of leaders, of pastors, uh, because we des desperately need more pastors so we can have more churches in Thailand. So... All of this, and what can you do? Pray, give, and go. You may have heard that. I know the kids heard it, because we were with the kids earlier, and they know that. They know to pray, give, and go. Uh, and so they've already prayed for people in Thailand. Um, so what can you do? So pray for the people of Thailand. Today we've talked about Goong, Deer, Ng, and Nui. Uh, but pray for people not just in Thailand, um, people all over the world. And people right here, right? People in Hutchinson need to know about Jesus as well. And give. Um, you are a church that gives to missions. We thank you for that. Um, but not just giving of financially, but are you giving of your time and your talents? And what are you doing with what God's given you to help people, to reach people? And lastly, go. Um, go might not look the same for you that it does for us. Um, if God's telling you to go to Thailand, well, then come see us because <laughs> we certainly could add more people to, to our team. But um, maybe go is someplace else. Or maybe go for you is just across the street or to somebody that you work with, right? So I just want to challenge you in those areas um, to pray, to give, and to go. And it's different for everybody, right? So we, we thank you for, for having November be your missions emphasis and for praying for lost people all around the world. Um, as Pastor Arnold comes up, we just thank you again for having us here uh, and letting us share about what God's doing in Thailand. Thank you. Yes. Paul and Robin, thank you so much for blessing us this morning. These guys are spreading the light in Thailand. Amen. And you, just like we, we, in the worship time, we, we heard how darkness is being pierced and how light comes forth. You know, they, they are spreading this light. They're bringing this light in Thailand. Just what, this picture of him sitting on a motorcycle with a monk in his back, you know. And, and this whole story about, you know, so like take a Trojan horse, uh, something that, that is like an idol, right? But then how the Holy Spirit told you to give it back because you bring the light and there is a different kingdom that comes with it. There is so much power in this, amen? And God is really using them there. And we want to partner with you guys. We want to do a special offering. If the ashes will come forward, um, let's just do a special offering for you guys. And as we're doing a special offering, would you guys come here to the front? I just want to bless you guys and pray an anointing over you but go ahead and ushers just hand it out for the offering and after you've given or j just extend your hand let's just, just let's just bless them if you can maybe just let's stand up together can you do that hallelujah jim come here hallelujah father we just lift up paul and robin right now to you and as they're getting ready to head back to the missions field, 
Father, we speak power into their life. We speak, Father, that you refine those vessels. Father, would you just fill them with the powerful presence of your Holy Spirit? Would you anoint their minds? Would you anoint their hearts? Would you anoint their ears so that they can hear clearly and distinguish your voice from all the other voices? Would you anoint their lips, Father, this, as they speak forth words that the Holy Spirit will just use those words to pierce darkness all around them, Father? That it will go deep into the hearts of their listeners, Father. Draw people unto you. You said that when you are raised, you will draw all men unto you. Father, I ask that in the hearing, as they speak, and in the hearing of people, Father, that you will draw all men, men and women, to you. Draw them to you, Father, and fill them with your spirit, we pray. Father, as they're getting ready, we're, we're rebuking the evil one, Father, so that they will be protected, that they will walk under your protection, that the finances will come together, that there will no, be no attack, Father, or mishap happening in their life right now, but we just put them under your coverage, that you just stretch forth your hand, Father, and just cover them under the shelter of your wings, Father. We put them under your care, and we bless them right now as they go back to the missions field. Walk with them, speak to them, give them visions and dreams, Father, again, and empower them, Father, for the work that you have laid out for them that they should walk in. We bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.